Oh, yeah. We've got a shingle back skink <laughs> in the UK. Anyone that keeps reptiles would give their, both their arms to keep this species. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, real. A real classic. They're very, like, if someone here in Australia you have to have reptile license to have these guys, but they're really good, like, like starter pets for people who love reptiles because they're super chill and so easy. So you can keep single bats if you Yeah, got if you've got a license. So, yeah, any reptiles here in Australia, um, you have to have a license for. I'm learning that other countries you don't. You can yeah, just have, have reptiles, too, too which I never, I never realised, but I was like, wow, okay. Um, but yeah, so license to have, once you've got a license, like it's not that hard to get, like you have to go through a process first, but um, yeah, once you've got that, you can keep these guys as a pet, blue tongues, which are like the cousin to these guys. Yeah, really yeah. Welcome back to the channel. We're at Steve Irwin's place. We're at the Australia Zoo. Come with us and check this amazing place out. Okay, we're walking in. Will it be Mickey Mouse? Will it be brilliant? Who knows? But at the end of the day, whatever you think about him, I think this guy is a legend. He did so much and cared so much, especially for reptiles. Let's go and see what his place still looks like. So I'm here to see the Australian stuff, but you can't not say hi to a Komodo dragon, can you? Look at the size of that thing. Doesn't matter how long guanas and monitor lizards get to be, nothing gets as big as a Komodo dragon. What a beast. So I've been here five minutes and seen the Komodo dragon and some Australian skinks. Already five minutes in, the best laid out, the most immaculate, the most well planted, the best enclosures so far. The best zoo I've ever been to. The enclosures are immaculate. The water, if there's water in there, absolutely gorgeous. Crystal clear, no scum and algae all done out to a high level and ultra spacious for the animals just look at this place we've only just walked in and i can't believe it's going to get worse for sure i think it's just going to get better and better and better the infrastructure is huge absolutely massive the work the new work being built another komodo dragon enclosure being built wow this place is generating some money and that means people are coming to learn about this lovely stuff Again, enclosures are just immaculate and huge and landscaped. You just, yeah, you can't fault it. Overwhelming, it's that good. when you're a pool cleaner in Australia. Best pool cleaning job in the world. Even the museum, fascinating memorabilia and artifacts as well. Look at that. Thank you. 
<laughs> Quite emotional. Ooh, that was tough. <laughs> anyway. We're in the Rue bit now. And we're going to have some fun. Because Jackie loves kangaroos. I like a kangaroo, but come on. They might be common around here. But to us guys, a water dragon in the wild. Or water dragons in the wild. So this is how they normally set up it. I mean, we're in we're in the kangaroo park in the zoo, but you tend to have a dominant male looking out, and he'll be bobbing his head at other males that might be 30, 40 meters away. And then he'll tend to have his girls and things around in his area, like this one here. So again, banging on about vastness of space. This is the kangaroo area. It's the size of a city park. Just the kangaroo area. Absolutely phenomenal. I like the lizards and the snakes. Are these your favourites, Jackie? Yeah, one of them, and the koalas. The koalas. <laughs> well, in the same morning, you've petted a wild kookaburra and stroked a pet kangaroo, a tame kangaroo. So look at this gorgeous stone curly family, two young fluffy chicks. Looks like the adults, and I'm a meter away. And I have to say, this guy here is growling, or was growling. So he's obviously saying, "Back off!" But look at that! Absolutely beautiful. Look at the patterns and the just the form of those. Very similar to ones that we used to have living near the house in Spain, but these are Australian. That nictitating membrane on its eye. What a privilege. Have a listen. So, Jackie really wants us to have a walk through birdhouse. Yeah, this is the size of the entire reptile centre. <laughs> it's huge. Uh, the Fulcry Centre, sorry. It's huge. It really is. Walk through Avery you and the half. The camera will pick up the mess. Oh, it will. The mess on there. Yeah, yeah, it's like a heavy wow. duty mess, isn't it? So going back to the house plants, actually growing <laughs> in the right climate. Look at the size of that. Look at the size of this water dragon enclosure.
So that was just a bit of the one by enclosure. This is their bedroom. So you can do various experiences. Jackie was gonna get me a, a Komodo Dragon experience months ago, fully booked. And now you guys know I fly all kinds of birds of prey, golden eagles and so on. But they do a wedge tail eagle experience where, you know, do you know what? I'd like to be a member of the public and just, just meet a wedgie up close. Just to die for. Still my favourite. Not even rare. Still haven't got my hands on one this week. But look at this enclosure. The photo backgrounds actually work really well. So you can see my bioactive build for the dart frogs in the description. Let's look at a proper job.
again, more wildlife. Wild in the zoo. Look at this. So two questions this holiday. Why are all the cars white in Australia? I'm thinking a lot of higher cars, but also keeping them cool. Um, something I Googled this morning, why are so many Australian birds black and white in colour? I don't know whether it's uh, a cheap pigment for evolutionary sense, or is it a lot of woodland and forest birds that you tend to see in gardens like the UK. You, you, a lot of the birds that you get in your garden are really woodland edge. Is it just a, a really simple but effective colour to, to break up your outline in the dappled sunlight of a woodland? I don't know. Comment below. Why are so many Australian birds black and white in colour? Might be common, but it's good looking. And let's have a look <laughs> at the tortoise lady herself. <laughs> Taking a ride. <laughs> so Jackie loves her sulcatas and the Mediterranean tortoises over at Icarus. Well, that one's ginormous. And Jackie knows well how much poo they do. Who ate the flowers? Hmm? Very soft through there. Just trying to get her used to it. The wild ones, if they're on the road or something, do they bite or claw? Are they yeah, aggressive? Yeah, they? Quite, quite aggressive, right? Yeah, pretty aggressive. <laughs> so you got something that's cuddly, but yeah, still like wild. wild animals, <laughs> <so they're not laughs> really good. Uh, nice. That's When your shows are so popular, you have to build yourself a stadium. The reason I've been put onto this planet is to save wildlife. And I thank you for coming with me. Yeah, let's go.
So our son Kyle hand reared a couple of emu. Now you can keep them in a sort of a, an area they can walk around in and move in. But if you keep them how Kyle did, I mean, he's had much more room than this, believe it or not, thanks to a kind landowner where we used to live. But if you can have room they can run in, they are the most hilarious pet dinosaurs you could ever imagine. Really, really incredible animals. A cassowary, mm, probably a little bit more of a handful to keep as a pet. <laughs> so in the UK, ostriches, you need a DWA license, but emus you don't. Rear's a bit skittish, emus are the best for sure. Cassowary, yeah, much more of a dangerous pet dinosaur. You definitely couldn't keep that as a pet in the UK. The enclosure is vast and complex. And again, look at this. Nearly every aquatic exhibit I go to in the UK, the water's pea soup green. Look at this. You can see everything crystal clear. The presentation is second to none. Not often you see a tiger not pacing around its enclosure. How chilled out is that? So ringtail lemurs are cute. Look. But they don't top trump a water dragon. So if you keep reptiles, but you love wild herping, you'll know that seeing stuff in a zoo or even in your own collection doesn't come close to finding them in the wild. So this is great to see an echidna up close, but on one of the other videos on the channel, you'll see us find one in the wild and it's just a different feeling. And it's the same, I love my snakes, but even finding the commonest species out in the wild, it still trumps seeing them in captivity or in a zoo. But when you come to a zoo like this, it is mind blowing and it shows if you've got the money and the space, you can build enclosures that are just, yeah, they really do replicate the wild for these animals. Absolutely brilliant to see. Yeah, I can appreciate it. So to sum up, vast area, landscaped beautifully, a pleasure to walk around. Um, you need all day if you wanna see it all for sure, uh, but a most pleasurable experience walking around. Enclosures are vast for every species, but they're just laid out so well and done so good. From the snakes to, I don't know what, the, the big animals, the furry stuff that I'm not really here to see, but it's magnificent. Staff, phenomenal, no cheesiness, they're just so willing to talk to you, easy going people, not putting on an act. Um, if you want food, you can go back out. 
and no problem, have a picnic at your car. There's a good restaurant here as well. Value for money to get in, but absolutely fantastic value for money. Um, in, the, in the gallery, Robert's Gallery, you're not paying overpriced for the prints, well worth it, not at all overpriced. And there's various gift, gift shops and memorabilia shops. Again, you're not being ripped off, value for money. Well worth the spend, well worth coming to see uh, Australia Zoo if you ever get the chance. Uh, final word, it's been emotional. <laughs> yeah, lay across there. Get your head in. <laughs> Get your head in. Ow. It hurts like a real. <laughs> <laughs> Dashes. Mm.